Hey guys, what's up? It's Sean, Autotopia LA. Today we're down here at my buddy Dean's SoCal Classic Car Storage with Brian. First of all, what, what year is it? So it's a 68. Okay. My mother bought this for my grandmother back in 68. And how I got it was I, I totaled my dad's car and I needed a car and the only thing worse than totaling your dad's car is he's the cop and he shows up to the scene of the accident and he's like, you're not driving any more of my cars. So my mom's mom, his mother-in-law sitting there and says, how are these boys gonna get to school? He says, that's his problem. And my grandma looks at me and says, how much money you got in your pocket? And I says, Grandma, I got a dollar. And she says, give me the dollar. So I hand her the dollar, she gave me the keys. You got this car for a dollar? Yes. So I actually drove it in high school. Then later I took it down and restored the car. So I chose to go with what's called 427 Stroker, 351 Windsor Base. So it's got Z2 heads, Molly pistons. With this motor, about 560 horsepower, 540 foot-pounds of torque. I really wanted to, number one, have something that really won and struck that really good balance of yeah. performance, horsepower, high torque, and at the same time, reasonable weight. You're adding that much horsepower, you're adding that much torque, you gotta be careful so that you don't, obviously you don't get body, you don't get chassis twist or right yeah, Absolutely. Twist. Out of the box, these things were unibody. I chose to go ahead and extend the frame. So extended the frame all the way in the back, did a mini tub in the back, and you'll notice that there's no shock towers. Yeah. So it's yeah. a Mustang IFS2 kit in the front, yeah. custom sway bars front and back, which gives me that great handling. And it is it is on air, thus, you know, and I wanted the ability to be able to have an aggressive stance. Yeah. I wanted it to also be smooth. Um, so I wanted to be able to have an active system that would prevent body roll, so yeah. I would be able to actively drive the car and be more aggressive. What have you done brake-wise on the car? So I gotta tell you, high, Horsepower, uh, high compression engines, not a lot of vacuum, right? Absolutely. Uh, so you gotta go with something to help shout. So I went with Hydro Boost, okay. which is a good way to go. Mirror it up with Wil the, the Willwood system. So mm -hmm. I've got the Willwood Reservoir with 14.7 inch calipers. I wanted to respect the spirit of what the car is. It's a 60s yeah. muscle car, but I wanted performance. Yeah. I wanted handling, I wanted reliability, I wanted drivability. And what was your, what's your wheel choice and sizes and tires and all that stuff? So I wanted more of a staggered look. And so typically you'd have a little bit of an offset in terms of like maybe one size smaller on the front, like maybe someone would go with like a 19 in front or yeah. they'd go with a 20 in back. Mm -hmm. I really wanted to set that off a little different for a couple of reasons. So I chose to go with 18s in the front, I went with 20s in the back, and the reason I did that, again, you look at that quarter panel, it's a big quarter panel. Definitely, yeah. Right? So yeah. one, I wanted to fill it, but two, I wanted to give it kind of like a really kind of strong aggressive look in the back. They're three-piece wheels, yeah. I chose to go with, I could have got them any color I wanted, but this anodized red bolt to, to bolt together the three pieces. I love how it ties it all together. Thank it's you. really a great yeah. accent. Now, a lot of people don't know why it's called the Torino. Exactly. So Henry Ford II's wife was from the city of Turin, Italy, Torino, got Italy. It. Got it. So they chose to go ahead and name the vehicle after Henry Ford's wife. So I yeah. left the body alone, did a lot of customization and everything else. In the interior, that is the same seats that I sat in when I was kindergarten and my really? grandma drove me to school. They're not recovered. Wow! These are the original door panels, these are the original seats, front and back. So I took out the C4 transmission, cool. put in a Tremec T56 Magnum, it's got 2.66 narrowband gearing. The original gauges that came with the car, as we like to refer to as dummy lights, Yeah. the only thing yeah. that makes it a dummy is if you keep them. So uh, I'm like, hey, uh, it'd be really kind of cool to know what the temp is, and hey, you know, it'd be really cool now totally. I've got the manual in there to actually have, you know, understand my RPMs. and. So totally. all that dialed in, but you can see keeping again to the spirit of the design of the, yeah. of the late 60s in yeah. the original car. Well, I'll tell you what, unless there's other stuff that we haven't touched on, we'll, uh, we'll have Paul throw some cameras in and we'll go, go do a little bit of driving uh, in this guy. That, that, that sounds good. Let's go drive it, dude. Let's you go got do it. that part. We're gonna go for a drive, you guys. Like we were talking about, nothing, nothing against a Coyote or an LS, but god dang, there's something about yep. the sound you get from the push rod, the stroked motor like that. Oh, it's totally. Big cam, just big, rolling. Big, heavy cam like that, yeah. Bitching car, man. The little growl just makes me smile. Oh, it's right so now. good.
I just love that mid 500 horsepower range to me is such a perfect place to be. No, it totally is. Absolutely love this car. It's very unique, very well done, perfect power, the red on it, everything about this car, just completely blown away by it. Great to meet Brian and hang out and shoot a video with him. And a big thanks to you guys for hanging out and watching what we do here. And we will see you in the next episode. All right, man, later. <laughs> <laughs>